Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everybody is doing well out there today. Um, it's been just over a month since I've actually released a video tutorial or guide or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've released a couple of videos uh, in the last month or so kind of talking about why. And in the last video that I released, I asked you guys, uh, you know, what kind of content you would like to see uh, me talk about, whether it's new stuff or old stuff, containers, whatever. Um, and uh, a, a viewer, a subscriber uh, by the, the name at Gloma Killer, I think is how that's supposed to be pronounced. I could be wrong. If it is, I apologize. Um, said that they'd like to see uh, how to install a YubiKey in Proxmox. So basically adding uh, a physical hardware key uh, to Proxmox for two-factor authentication. And I love this idea. Uh, the reality is on my cluster that I've got right there, you can see those little, those three lights right there. That is my Proxmox high availability cluster. And I'm actually using a TOTP or a timed one-time password for my two-factor authentication on that. Um, I never really thought about using YubiKey on this. Luckily though, uh, the fine folks over at YubiKey uh, here a while back sent me an experience pack. Um, and if we take a look at this, oh, there's a little book in there, but basically uh, we get, <clears throat> Five different devices in here, a couple of USB A's, a couple of USB C's, and one uh, right there in the middle that has a uh, USB C and Lightning, uh, mostly for mobile devices. Um, and of course, these top two, uh, the two bigger ones here on the top, also have NFC in them, so you can like tap your phone or your tablet or whatever and authenticate without having to plug anything in. Absolutely love it. Uh, big shout out to Yubico for having sent this over uh, for, for me to take a look at and share with you guys. Uh, I actually briefly featured this in a previous video, um, but I thought it deserved uh, a bit more attention. These guys are amazing. Uh, you can't buy one of these experience kits anymore, um, but I'll have links in the description where you can go pick up the YubiKey that fits your needs. Uh, I should also mention though, it's always a good idea to have two uh, hardware keys uh, that are both programmed to each of the different services you're trying to use, whether it's Proxmox or your bank or your Facebook or your whatever will use a hardware key. You should always program two. That way, if you lose one, you've still got a backup and you can still get in to your accounts. So <clears throat> with that said, I wish I had muted that, but whatever. So if we if we switch over, uh, I'm, I'm trying some different stuff in, in production here, but there we go. Okay, that's gotta stop. Um, Anyway, let's just, you know what, let's just throw that back there. Cool. So here we are, we're looking at my, this is my, my test server Proxmox setup. This is a single node um, and this doesn't have any, this has just got the basic username and password authentication on it. Uh, in this video, oops, I guess let's, uh, uh, in this video, we are going to uh, take a look at adding YubiKey, um, but, uh, we're also going to take a look at adding a TOTP or again, a timed one time password. That's where you might have an app on your phone that changes the six uh, numerical digits or changes the six digits uh, every like 30 seconds or whatever. Um, and you have to type those in within that time frame. That's a TOTP password. Uh, we're going to take a look at both, like I said, TOTP and YubiKey for this. So let's first get signed in. So let's go back over to here. Uh, let's get signed in to our Proxmox set up here like so <clears throat> so to do two-factor authentication the totp very very straightforward here uh, what we're going to do is come over here to two-factor we're going to come up here and click on add and we're just going to select this first option right here that says totp and then right here we can select which user we want to add this for uh, which i'm using root for this so that's what we're going to do uh, we're going to call this totp uh, my secret here is random, or, or it's just a random string of characters. You can change it. And every time you change it, this uh, this QR code down here will also change. And then of course we've got an issuer name, which is uh, the Proxmox VE uh, Prox here. And then what I need to do is grab my phone, which is right here in my pocket. Let's switch over to this. I will get the hang of this as soon, right? So I'm gonna do this I'm gonna open up Authy. Uh, I've got a thumbprint on there as well as a pen. So I've got a couple of options there. Um, and what I wanna do on the screen, this was me testing earlier. What I'm gonna do is click, come up here, I'm gonna click the three dots right there. I'm gonna click on add account. I'm gonna click scan QR code. Uh, and I'm just going to scan that QR code. Um, and then it's like, hey, uh, hopefully that will show up, maybe not. But it's like, hey, is this right? I'm gonna say, yes, it doesn't, I'm gonna save that. And right there, uh, it gave me the digits that I need to type in uh, up there on my screen. So we're gonna come back up to here 
and I'm going to do three, one, two, five, six, six, like so, and hit enter. And now I have this TOTP password. So what's going to happen now is if I come up here to the top right and I click there and I click log out, um, it's taking me back to here and I'm going to say my username and my password. If I typed it right, I don't think I did. I typed it wrong. I fat fingered that. Let's try that again. There we go. And now it's asking me for that TOTP password again. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait. It's just got like three three seconds left there. So uh, let's make sure I get this right, like so, and confirm, and now we're logged in. So um, it really is just that easy to, uh, to get uh, a two-factor authentication with that timed one-time password configured. Very, very straightforward. Took us just a few seconds, really, and we're up and running. So now we've got at least a little bit of two-factor authentication on our account. So what I'm going to do is actually come back over to here. I'm going to go back to my desktop. Uh, now that we've proven that that works, I'm going to go ahead and remove it like that. I'm going to click remove. And now that's gone. So the next thing that we want to do here is actually take a look at how to get um, a YubiKey set up here. Now, you will need one of the newer generations. I've got one that I bought in 2017. Uh, it is blue instead of black, and it does not work for what we're doing here. Uh, I tried it a bunch of different ways bunch of different computers, none of it worked. So uh, you will want one of the newer generation YubiKeys for this to work. So what we need to do first on this is uh, switch over back to my desktop. Uh, we're gonna come over here to Realms. We have to go to Realms first. Um, and then I'm going to go, PAM is the, the what we're gonna use here for the standard authentication. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. The required two-factor authentication right here, the required TFA, we're gonna come down and we're gonna select YubiCo. And right here, it's asking for a Yubico uh, API ID and a Yubico API key and a URL, but only the ID and the key are required. So what we're gonna do in order to get that, I'm gonna pull up my notes here, and we're gonna open this in a new tab. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're going to go to upgrade.yubico.com uh, slash get API key, very straightforward. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our, our email address, Dot com. So then what we're going to do, oops, we're going to grab, I apologize, I was a bit confused for a second as that tends to happen. We're going to grab one of our one of our newer generation uh, Yubi keys here, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in to a USB port on my computer. Now I can tap right there, and it's going to fill in this uh, Yubi key one-time password that was generated when I, uh, when I plugged in the device and touched it. And of course, it's making a bunch of noise there. Let me mute my system. So then what we're gonna do is I say, I, I, I've read and accept the terms and conditions. I'm gonna click get API key. So here's our client ID. We're gonna copy this. And then we're gonna come back to Proxmox and we're gonna put that in right there for our API ID. And then for our key, it's actually gonna be the secret key right here. Then we're gonna copy that and come back over and we're going to paste that in. And we're gonna say, okay. And so now having done that, what we've done is we have basically set up our own little internal IP reference so that uh, the software knows what those keys should be. It's kind of put all of the little bits and pieces together behind the scenes so that it knows that uh, this device that I put in there is good. We've, we've got everything uh, set up. So um, we can use other I or other devices if we need to authenticate with those, but this was just getting it set up in the back end. So now what we want to do is actually set up the front end of this. So we're going to come back to our desktop. We're going to come over here to two-factor again. We're gonna come up here to where it says add. We're gonna to go to uh, Yubico OTP. And again, we're gonna use our user right here. We're gonna call this uh, Yubi, like that. And then for that, again, we're gonna take our key, whether it's the same one or a different one. We're gonna plug it in. We're gonna give it a second, then we're gonna tap it. It's gonna fill in that information and just automatically it, it hit enter for us. We're good to go. Uh, now we've got our, our Yubi key set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Um, I'm gonna unplug it again right there. Uh, we're gonna come up to here and we're gonna log out. So now when I uh, log in with my username and password, like so, we're gonna click log in. And then, hey, we're gonna go ahead. Now we're gonna take our UB key again. We're gonna plug it in. Uh, we're going to do that, confirm, and we're in. 
So just that uh, quickly and easily, we have taken a look at how to set up a two-factor authentication app, whether that's Authy or Google Authenticator or whatever your uh, TOTP password provider preference of choice happens to be. We also took a look at how to get a YubiKey set up so that we can have a hardware password. Uh, I know sometimes uh, some of those those uh, TOTP password uh, apps can be cloned, they can be moved from one device to another. So having a hardware device like the YubiKey uh, is, is much more secure in my opinion. Uh, they're much harder to clone. Um, and you also have to have a physical intervention where you have to touch the key. So I really do prefer the, T the, the, the YubiKey method here with the hardware key. So one thing that I forgot to mention is that <clears throat> this process works whether you're using a single node like I'm demonstrating here, or even if you're doing a, a cluster like I've got back here, um, because we're actually doing this, let me switch back over, because we're actually doing this at the data center level here, we can see we're clicked here, and then we're on two-factor authentication and realms. Um, because we are doing all of this at that data center level, this will work again, whether it's a one node setup or a cluster or whatever the case is, this will work with either type of setup. So I just wanted to make sure that there was no confusion on that. Um, if you try to go to any of the IP addresses, if you've got a cluster like I do back here, uh, that same authentication process will be uh, in place, whether it's a TOTP or a hardware key, um, because we're doing this at the data center level in Proxmox, uh, this will work with either kind of setup. So I just wanted to clarify that. But there you go, there's how to set up TOTP and YubiKey in Proxmox. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That would be amazing. Um, also, I'm talking really fast again. I'm trying, I'm trying real hard to slow down. So please bear with me. This is something I'm actively working on now. Um, so if you found the video helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up, maybe share it with somebody who you think could maybe use a little bit more security in their home lab. Um, also, let me know in the comment section down below if, if you use what kind of two-factor authentication you use. Do you use it? Do you not use it? Why? Why not? Whatever the case is there, I'd love to know more about that. Also, uh, in the comment section, let me know what kind of content you might like to see in an upcoming video. Maybe you've got a, a container you're having an issue with. Maybe you're a developer and you've got a, a project you're working on that you'd like to see featured. Let me know that too in the comment section down below. Or of course, you can email me, david at dbtechreviews.com. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.